uh, the role of a lightning pilot was um, peacetime, quick alert. It was you know UK air defence. That was the primary role of the lightning. Um, I, I don't know. It, it probably wasn't in 1986. It wasn't deemed to be uh, an aircraft that was probably going to go to war. It was very good at its job at protecting the UK airspace of intercepting bears three or four hundred miles off the UK coast. But the reality of day, night, ECM, low-level interceptions against hordes of Russian bombers or fighters was just pretty unrealistic, to be honest. I mean, it's only got two very small missiles, as you can see there, and, it, you know, no range. Uh, the Phantom was the aeroplane that was actually going to do the job if, if, we, if ever ha it ever happened that we would have to go to war, I guess. Were the weapons actually capable? Uh, <laughs> they were they were reliable so if you were behind a, a harrier for example at low level over the sea um, then if you were a mile behind it and you were you know in in the envelope not too far off his tail and he was accelerating then yes and he wasn't chucking out flares it probably would have taken him out it was it wasn't a complicated missile it was quite a simple missile once you pull the trigger it, off it went and it was just like a big firework so what squadrons were you based with uh, I moved from the LTF to 11 Squadron, which was the other squadron. Uh, five was still going when I was there, and then 11 Squadron became the last squadron. So once you finish the LTF, you still really, you'd only scratch the surface of being a Lightning pilot. So you had to then start this hugely laborious process of becoming, um, first of all, um, limited combat ready, which meant you could sit on QRA, and then you became fully operational after that. So the squadron wanted to get you um, QRA capable as quick as possible because that meant they could sit you in the QRA shed and you could go and do what they didn't want to have to do, which was sitting in the QRA shed for 24 hours a day, day and night, over Christmas, etc. And to get to that stage, you still didn't do half of what you were going to have to do later on. So the aim of getting to QRA status was to have an instrument rating which allowed you to land in really bad weather on your own, uh, slightly more than uh, the limitations would be with the hours that you had. Um, and air-to-air -air refueling, which would be um, a prerequisite of doing a, a QRA launch, and also be able to do a vis ident on any target day or night with lights on or lights off. So that was what you were aiming to get to, that, that achievement. All the other stuff of leading four aircraft and doing air combat and dissimilar air combat and low-level affiliation, that would come later uh, once you'd got your QRA status. So what would you say the best characteristics <coughs> of Lightning were? The best characteristics of Lightning? Uh, that's hard to question. I mean, it looks great for a start. Um, it's very simple to get going. You just have to press a couple of buttons and open the HP Cox and off it goes. Once it started, and uh, that was a big problem with it, once it was started, it was pretty simple to operate. Um, and it turned pretty well, but I guess its, it's acceleration was probably the, the best thing for it. It just, you know, it would just keep going and going and going. Was, there was no stopping it, really. So. How many hours did you get in the Lightning? Uh, I did about 400 hours uh, on the Lightning in two years, so uh, pretty much average, I guess. And did you ever do any display work? Um, yes and no. I had to um, go up to Lucas once to give a display-ish to um, Trouble One Squadron for their 75th anniversary. And I'd only been on the squadron about three or four months and my father had been the boss of Trouble One Squadron so they asked if I could take the aeroplane up there and I was incredibly nervous because the AOC was standing there watching and I was given a very, very um, intricate thorough brief by the squadron boss who said that you can take off, you can turn down when you can do a circuit, you can do one low flyby and pitch up and go but don't do anything else and I was very, very cautious making sure that because, because there was about 500 senior officers watching me <laughs> and I didn't have an awful lot of experience so uh, yes, that was my only foray into that. How did it fare against other aircraft, foreign aircraft? Um, it, was, it was a vintage of sort of F-104s and uh, F-4s and F-100s etc. So it, it fared okay up against them and Mirage 3s. It was you know, on a par with them if not better. But when the F-15 came along and when the F-16 came along, then it was completely outclassed. Mm. And there was no radar warning receiver, so you never knew if you had been locked up by an F-15 or an F-16. So you had no idea if you'd been shot down before you got to the merge anyway. So it was very limited, and that's why I say that I, I think it was, it was great for being a point defense aircraft. It was great for doing QRA. 
but in a real war in the Cold War than it would have been uh, limited to say the least.